what's good josh your boy ross back at again with another video so we're going to check out 10 worst triple h wwe booking decisions by polana productions now we've had this debate on who's really booking the show is it triple h does he have majority power does vince mcmahon is he able to supersede him on certain booking decision decisions and the argument has has come up that you know Triple H hasn't always made uh, the best booking decision since he has been in control. He's had some uh, mistakes and blunders as well. So we can't sit up here and make it seem like Triple H is perfect. And I've been one of those people that have not agreed with everything that Triple H has done. But I will say this, and I'm going to stand by this, when you can agree or disagree, I feel like Triple H has been overall better when it comes to booking and tree and um just the the match setups and you know the things we've seen on wwe television in comparison to what we've gotten for the past few years with vince vince you know he does have some some good bright spots but those are few far in between at least with triple h the one thing i can say so far the the pay-per-views or the ple's have been fantastic i've enjoyed every single one that he's uh been a, a major part of you know they weren't all perfect but a lot of them feel like they're important the shows feel important the weekly shows that's here and there but the the ple's or the pay-per-views they feel important and we've seen that with backlash granted maybe you can give some credit to vince mcmahon on what happened on backlash we don't know how much he was uh in control of so but we're gonna check this out because you know triple h is not perfect he deserves fair criticism as well appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel let's check this bad boy out Triple H has been booking WWE for nearly a year now, and while he's done a <clears> relatively <throat> good job, there's been some questionable booking decisions. Of some course, of these of were so bad that people were speculating that Vince McMahon is secretly in charge, but no, we gotta be fair and recognize that Triple H can be a bad booker at times mm -hmm. and make some mistakes. So let's look at his 10 worst booking decisions. Number 10, the women's division. The first mm. spot on this list is dedicated to an entire division. The women's division has been poorly booked for the last year. Sure, there's been some good moments here and there, but for the most part, it's been bad. The women tag team championships are pretty pointless at this moment. And when it was introduced that they would return, there was a lot of hype surrounding them, but they failed to make them feel important. Ron yeah, the, the, the division itself just... It hasn't been hidden. Outside of the few main event players, everything else has just kind of been mid to low tier. Ronda Rousey was horribly booked during her SmackDown Women's Championship yes. reign. I'm not saying she's incredible with promos, but you got to figure something out. Maybe give her a manager. That would have been a great solution. Yes. It really isn't that complicated. And most of the shows only feature a limited amount of women wrestling, and it is dominated by men. And when you barely book them, you don't have long-term storytelling, and that's another issue with most of these women's title matches. Mm -hmm. This has been a problem for some time now. Triple H has not been able to fix it, and hopefully Hopefully he does figure it out and hold on y'all i want to make this the screen a little bit bigger for y'all here we go Hope fixes it but bigger, right now but right now he's done a bad job with booking women Number nine, Brock versus Bobby. Brock Lesnar mm. and Bobby Lashley had the third match of their trilogy at Elimination Chamber, one month before WrestleMania 39. And as a result, Bobby Lashley missed WrestleMania. Meanwhile, Brock Lesnar wrestled Omos, and I think it's fair to say that this was a bad booking decision. Bro mm -hmm. This is true. Granny, I don't know. That one, I don't know how much of control he had for that because we know Vince love some brock lesnar so we know that is a thing i don't know how much control he had on that but i you know if triple h gave the green light on this one i have to say bobby lashley not being featured on wrestlemania was that was a miss that was a miss Brock versus Bobby 3 should have taken place at WrestleMania. Even yeah. the ending of the match at Elimination Chamber was lackluster. It was a Bobby Lashley win via disqualification yeah. after a low blow from Brock Lesnar. Overall, this was disappointing. It should have been at the grandest stage of them all with a clean finish. Mm -hmm. Number 8, Karrion Cross. When Karrion Cross first made his debut on the main roster, many people blamed Vince McMahon for never giving him a real chance to shine. This well, Triple H brought him back and then continued 
to do a bad job at booking him. His feuds, his people do bring this up. The people do definitely bring up Karrion Cross's uh his uh return under the Triple H regime. Outside of maybe Drew, his feud with Drew it was okay. You know, it had some had some highlights. They haven't really done much with him. Like, he's literally just been floating in this mid-car purgatory. He's the carrying cross that we know from NXT. But you, you, you don't, like, when he comes out, you don't have this sense of dread. Like, uh-oh, whoever he's facing is a, it's, it's about to be some, some shit for him, you know? matches and the overall presentation just has not been good you can make the argument and say that it's carrying cross who isn't connecting with the audience however i'm a believer that strong writing aka booking is the most important part of the mm -hmm. process and while it does usually take a talent to make things work 75 percent of it comes down to the writing and triple h has not been booking him in an exciting way that can help him succeed Number seven, True. L.A. Knight. Oh, Another name yeah. that has not been booked well right now is L.A. Knight. Look, I'm glad Triple H got rid of the entire Max Dupree nonsense. Of course, of course. While it wasn't entirely garbage, L.A. Knight is significantly better. With that being said, Triple H inserted L.A. Knight into a feud with Bray Wyatt, which was the worst thing to do because coming off of his return, there was no way that L.A. Knight was going to come out of that feud with a win. Mm -hmm. So why would you book it? I don't know. What's worse is that he hasn't done anything important afterwards and he missed wrestlemania triple h really had la knight available for wrestlemania and just didn't book him i just yeah man that that he he's another cautionary tale um even though he lost a few with bray Wyatt, he still somehow came out on top when it comes to fan perception people still cared about him people still do care about him in the whole this is all i've asked for on the smackdown side of things they do something with him Get him in a prominent role. Hell, find a way to get the, the United States Championship on the guy. Something. We got to do something with him this year because he is a top talent. He has the potential to be a top talent. They just got to let him do his thing, man. Get him in something important. I just don't understand how someone so over with the audience isn't really winning matches. He's got to win the money in the main contract and then proceed to become the world heavyweight champion. I, I wish that was the case, but it did... It does seem like they're booking maybe Cody because that's the only way Cody can get to Roman. It seems like they're booking Cody to maybe win money in a bank. We'll see. That is how you save LA Knights. Number six, Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt's return was absolutely perfect. Everything from the weekly teases to the ultimate return at Extreme Rules could not have been booked better. Even his first promo on SmackDown showed us a lot of potential. And then Triple H proceeded to book him terribly. I'm not sure if it was Triple H or the writers or Wyatt himself who came up with the Uncle Howdy stuff, but yeah. that was not good television. And to make it worse, the story did not progress throughout the six months of TV time. Mm -hmm. I don't know who was a part of it, but Hunter is the one as the booker who needs to recognize what's happening and mm -hmm. he's got to take over. For that, I think he should get the blame. It was bad booking from him and his team. That's fair and enough. we haven't even seen Bray Wyatt in weeks due to an undisclosed injury or illness. When he he does return i hope triple h does a better job at booking why because i point. think he's still got a lot of potential number five damage control oh. bailey eo sky and dakota kai all showed up to SummerSlam as a new faction a faction that was supposed to take over the women's division and this gave fans a lot of hope mm -hmm. that the women's division would thrive but that wasn't the case triple h did a really poor job at booking these three ladies it got off to a bad start when Dakota and Io Sky were unable to win the initial Women Tag Team Championship tournament, only to win it weeks later. If you're gonna yeah, book them, that was that was. I, I mean, it kind of made sense for them to win it when it initially happened. I was like, okay, they're gonna win it, and then they didn't. I was like, that don't make sense. You're, you're trying to book these women as legit threats, and then they win it weeks later for them to only lose it. Like, it, 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 then they lost it, like, relatively quickly, too. I'm just like, mm. And then it didn't help that Bailey, she lost, like, three times in a row to Bianca Belair. Ah, oh, man. It's, yeah, it, it, it didn't, it didn't, they didn't stick the landing. They, they arrived. Everyone was hyped. I was hyped. SummerSlam, they arrived. It was great. 
They didn't stick the landing, unfortunately. To win it anyways, it would have been better to have them win it the first time around. Anyways, aside from that, they've just been booked to look like a bunch of losers for the last six or seven months, and I expected the complete opposite. It is looking like that is turning into a storyline now, so mm -hmm. hopefully that is the direction they go into, that Bailey was just a bad leader who was selfish. Number four, Money in the Bank. Vince McMahon booked Austin Theory to win the money in the big contract, and he was really high on the kid and thought he would become <laughs> a huge star for the company. Yep. With that being said, he booked him to win at the worst possible time, in the middle of Roman's historic title reign, and so Triple H thought it would make logical sense for him to- Bro, they buried him. Bro, they made Austin Theory look like a joke, bro. I, was, I still remember that promo segment where Roman Reigns just literally sunned him. Like, just sunned him. Like, that, you, daddy's not home no more, but I can be your new daddy, man. Like, he was disrespecting my boy. Book Theory to cash in on Seth Rollins for the US title. I don't love it, but that's at least something unique. But the terrible booking decision came afterwards when he had him lose, lose. the match. <laughs> Austin Theory then explained how he cashed in on Seth because Roman has the bloodline around, but then he ended up losing anyways. That was just <laughs> terrible booking. A failed cash in on Roman Reigns would have been far better. And I know he's fine now as a character, but that doesn't mean that it was a good booking decision in my opinion. Number three, the draft. That would have been very interesting too. If he would have cashed in and still lost because of the numbers game. And then it would have kind of spiraled him out. And he would have been like, he would have been frustrated and, and pissed off and he would have started taking it out on baby faces and more, been more aggressive, I would have been okay with that. But he cashed in and then still lost. I get it was like for him to do a hard reset, Austin Theory, but you still kind of made him look like a joke in the end. In the end, I understand why it happened. It's just there could have been a better way to get the end result of Austin Theory just not giving the F no more. Draft. The WWE draft was disappointing. I don't of think it was booked course. that great. Triple H had the opportunity to improve its presentation, add some general managers, and make each pick feel important. Then it was booked the same way it was for the last five years. Yep. To make it even worse, you have SmackDown wrestlers competing for the World Heavyweight Championship, which is supposed to be exclusive for Raw. You already broke the rules yep. of the draft <laughs> and its concept. Then you got a good amount of free agents. I understand Brock Lesnar being a free agent, but why is Omos, Dolph Ziggler, and Mustafa Ali all- Oh, damn. I didn't know. So Brock, Omos, Von Wagner, Mustafa, Dolph, Baron- Cedric, Sheldon, Apollo, and what? Zion Quinn? What? Why? Who? I didn't even know these were all free agents. What is going on? Why is why is Baron Corbin a free agent? Nobody wants him on either brand. What is going on, bro? This is, they didn't think this out at all. And I don't even want to fully just blame Triple H, but at the same time, God damn, they didn't, bro. This is, it's confusing. All free agents, I don't get it. I'm not happy with this year's drafts. Number two, the world title. I personally oh, think that the boy. WWE should have split the WWE and Universal Championship yep. because we essentially have a third world title now. Yep. But the company clearly has plans on making Roman the champion for another five years. <laughs> so I like the idea of introducing another world championship. That is not a problem. With that being said, there's two things I didn't like from Triple H and how he booked the return of this belt. First and foremost, I think the old design is much better. Secondly, the way he introduced it was not good. Hunter basically said Roman Reigns is unstoppable. The yep. roster is pathetic. <laughs> and here's a belt for all of you who can't beat Roman. <laughs> I like the design. I like the modernized design of it. I know some people don't because of the big W in the middle. But obviously, WWE is all about marketing and branding. So they're going to have that big W in the middle. Can't avoid that. Do like the design of it. But I do get his point. He basically said... Roman can't be beat. The rest of you motherfuckers can't beat him. So this is the second place championship. Technically kind of the third place. But we're going to say the second place championship. Because Roman doesn't have to be on the show. He's going to be exclusively on SmackDown. USA Network. They're tired of not having a full-time champion. Here you go. Fight for it. <laughs> It made it feel like a mid-card title, and that's why this is on the list. Oh, he could have simply just avoided that comment. 
and number one, Cody loses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the worst booking decision that a lot of people did not like was Cody Rhodes losing to Roman Reigns at yeah. WrestleMania 39 for the undisputed Universal WWE yeah. Championship. I wasn't one of those people who absolutely despised it, but I added it to the list because there were a lot of people who did not like it at all. They thought WrestleMania 39 was the perfect time and Cody was the perfect person. I don't know about you, but let me know in the comments below. Do you think that Triple H made a huge mistake and that Cody should have walked out of WrestleMania 39 as a new champion? Or are you going to wait like me until next year to see what <laughs> WWE does? Let me know and let me know. What I'm not trying to wait till next year, man. I'm going to just be honest with you. I think they've always had, they obviously had the decision on who's going to win weeks before mania even started probably i do think that is a combination Mo uh, i do think vince had can say so over that because it's i mean right now he's on the roman train this is what he always wanted roman to be and some some people have made the statement it i they can't see vince of all people letting someone leave they left WWE, went and started up a rival company for that person to come back and beat the top champion. <laughs> you know, when you think about it, I can see Vince not doing that. But at the same time, at the same time, man, even if Triple H, I mean, I'm sure he gave it the go to. And uh, he did double down even, uh, I think, in the press release after afterwards saying this. The, the, that chapter is closed, but the story still continues. No, bro. The story. This is one of those things you got. They should have struck. They should have struck while the iron was hot. And Cody. It, it's funny. Cody wasn't even the one people originally wanted. They wanted Sami Zayn to be the one because he got so over. But then people knew. I mean, ultimately, they weren't going to give it to Sami. So then Cody comes back. And he starts getting over because people are like, all right, well, it's not going to be Sammy. Well, at least Cody makes sense. Cody should be the one to do it. And the match itself was fantastic. Love that match. That match was great. Love that match. One of my favorite main events. It's just that ending. Just It's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I get it. They want Roman Reigns to break a thousand days. But, bro, some that, that reign can literally that rain shouldn't supersede the, the the story itself and the story itself is cody finally doing what he could what his father couldn't do finally doing what he's dreamed to do that's the only only reason why he would ever come back to wwe is to be the wwe champion i i just think it would have been fantastic and then you would have, it would have felt some, it would have felt fresh after uh, WrestleMania because now it feels like we're in the same situation we were in before WrestleMania. It feels the same. Roman's not going to be there on the show much. They've literally created a new championship. So Raw can have a, a champion on there full time. Cody now has to fight his way back up the mountain again. Like people, I've already jumped off the train. And I don't know how long people are going to be willing to stay on this ride. If it don't happen at SummerSlam, then a good chance it's probably not going to happen to WrestleMania. And can they really stretch this out to WrestleMania? I don't know. But if you want to give Triple H a, a criticism for this booking decision, no matter how much he played into it, I can't get mad at you. I think this is a very, this was a mistake. Some people agree that Roman should still be champion. I don't. I think he sh it should have ended at this year's WrestleMania. So comment down below. Let me know. Are there any other Triple H booking decisions that you guys weren't a big fan of this year or this past year since he's been in control? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K and I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.